Sorry, I'm turning on something. I'm going to record this so I can post a video of it to YouTube later. Um, I think what happened was last time we had one of these Pear Deck things, I forgot to hit record and I had to use the one for my other class. So uh, here's our first slide. It's geometry unit one review and I have a couple of funny little comics here. I guess funny is a relative term, but uh, we have a right triangle and instead of it being labeled as a hypotenuse, we have a hippopotamuse. And then the other comic, you have Pythagoras taking a shorter route instead of going up and making a 90 degree left turn. So they're like, you're so cool, Pythagoras. And I'm also wearing my, my Pythagorean theorem shirt today because, well, that's part of what we're learning about, a squared plus b squared is c squared. OK, so what we're going to be covering in this uh, presentation and what your test is on are these things here. So 1.1, segment length and midpoints. You took notes on that uh, the first week. Not the first week of school, but the first week we actually started doing stuff. So it was like week two of school. And then 7.1, interior and exterior angles. 7.2, isosceles and equilateral triangles. We took those notes and kind of went in that order. And then today we're also going to look at how we classify triangles, which is a review, but I do need to cover it because there are some test questions, a couple of them on classifying triangles. Okay, so here's your first interactive slide. You're going to go back to the Pear Deck tab, and you're going to plot a point at the origin. I feel like I need one more screen. I can't. <laughs> uh. All right, I have eight of 23 responses. Looks like you're all getting it correct so far, which is fantastic. I have 16, oh, 17 of 23. And if you weren't able to join um, right at the start when we started this, um, the code is available to you back on our Google Meet. So if I can see who hasn't joined yet that you're in the Meet. Uh, oh wait, there we go. She's joining right now. Okay. Yeah, everyone that's on Go Guardian is in here. So if I show your responses, look at that. We all got it right. <laughs> I'll put your uh, point right at the origin. Okay, it's the point zero zero. Doesn't look like that one person didn't do it yet. That is a big point, but it is correct. This one is almost correct. Okay, it needs to be at zero, zero. It's where the two axes intersect. And so that's important as we kind of move forward. You know the coordinates of the origin. And then this is your next interactive slide. Which of these doesn't belong? Oh, you guys are doing really good on this one. I know it's tough, right? I would love to say that this is a test question, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> uh, but I find myself funny, really. Um, so if 
I show you responses. Most of you figured out that Mrs. Doolin as a potato laying down does not belong with the other three things. <laughs> um, the other things that we have here, the distance formula, this thing is huge. This is like a big part of our unit is being able to find the distance of a, a segment. Okay. And so the distance formula actually comes from the Pythagorean theorem, actually comes from a right triangle. Okay, so if you have a right triangle, the legs are the two sides that make up the right angle. The side across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So if you have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if you take the square root of both sides, well, that's where the distance formula comes from because the value of a, this distance, is just subtracting the um, y values right here and then this distance here the value of b in this particular thing is just uh, subtracting the x values to find out how far apart they are okay so now let's let's try to put this to uh work you know we're thinking about these three uh things that do go together and this is what you want to use to basically figure out what is the exact length of the segment with endpoints at the origin, we covered what that is, and at 3, 6. There's lots of ways to do this. So do it however you would like. You're going to put your answer on the Pear Deck slide. It's a multiple choice question. Miss Doolin. Yeah, Jaden. It's not letting me into the pair deck. No, are you trying the code um, L? Oh, it's an L? I that think it's an, an L, I. right? Yeah, lovely. L is like, I know, it's really weird. Uh, that's, okay. that's why it's an L. I have seven of you have responded. Uh, three of you have it correct so far. And four of you have it wrong. I'm a little worried. I have 16 of 26 responses. Uh, I feel we might need some, some direction. So let's kind of take a look at this question. You can still, I think you can go back and change your answer because it does show the answer is changing um, because what you guys are showing me that you think the answer is so far is two of you say 45. Five of you say the square root of 45. Eight of you say 21. And five of you say the square root of 21. So you can probably change your answer is what I'm, I'm taking away from this. But let me share this with you instead. Okay, so here's just a slide that I have the problem on. And if you come back to our Google Meet, you want to take a look at this. Okay, so I'm starting with the Pythagorean theorem. Good old a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, that's going to help me find out the value of C, which is the length, the exact length of that segment in the picture. And um, to figure out what A and B are, I have some notation here, this little triangle. That stands for uh, a delta. It's a Greek letter, uh, like a Greek letter D is its equivalent. But it, it means in mathematics the change in x and the change in y. So it's basically, if you imagine a right triangle, how long are the leg lengths? And you should figure out that the two leg lengths are 3 and 6. So I'm going to leave that there and see if anyone wants to change their answer. I'm 
remember when you square a number, three squared is going to be three times three. Six squared is six times six. All right, I'm going to have to show you some more of this because I'm not seeing answers change in the way I want them to. <laughs> oh, wait. Um, it's just slightly too much. <laughs> okay, look back at Google Meet and look at what I'm displaying to you. The length of C, which is the length of that leg segment, is the square root of 9 plus 36. What does that simplify to? Okay, finally the correct answer is in the lead. <laughs> oh, it just went back down. Someone doubted themselves. Now it's going back up. Nine people have the right answer. Here's your responses. It's the square root of 45 people. Okay, um, here are your answers. It's the square root of 45 because 9 plus 36 is 45. And um, on the test, you may see a question where the answer is written as a, a root like that, like the square root of 45. But you may also see an estimated value. So I'm going to open up a calculator tab real quick. All right, so say this question was on a test and the answer was the square root of 45, but you weren't given the square root of 45 as a choice. You might have to do this and evaluate it to see what it's approximately equal to. So it's about six and seven tenths. Uh, just keep that in mind. There are You can represent a number two ways. So the exact value is when it is the square root symbol of a number that's not a perfect square. If it was a perfect square, then you actually get an integer answer back, but that's the only time you do. Like if I take the square root of 25, I'm gonna get five back. The only time you're gonna get an integer out of taking the square root of something is when it's a perfect square. When it comes from squaring a number, like 44 uh, squared, I don't know where the square button is, but 44 times 44 is this big number, and then if I take the square root of 19, 36, then I'll get an integer back. Otherwise, it's always, always, always an irrational value. Okay, so hide these responses. We're going to move on to slide six. What is the midpoint of the segment with endpoints at the origin and three comma six? So we're looking at the same segment, but now we're doing something different. Um, midpoint formula. You have a formula for it. You can also think of it as taking the average of the two x values and taking the average of the two y values. So you guys are going to go back to the Pear Deck tab and choose which one of those you think is the correct answer. Okay, so I'm going to share a different screen with you guys because some of you are confused. All right, so come back to the Google Meet 
And our question is, what is the midpoint of the segment with endpoints at the origin and three comma six? So to find the midpoint, this is your formula. You add the two x values together, which is always the first number in an ordered pair, and the two y values together to take the average, which the y values are always the second number in an ordered pair. So just plugging in what I have, it's 0 plus 3 divided by 2 for the x-coordinate of the midpoint, and it's 0 plus 6 divided by 2 for the y-coordinate of the midpoint. So using this, go back to your choices. What does that simplify to? So you guys should be going back. Um, there should be 12 of you changing your answers right now. Uh, the x term, 0 plus 3, is the same as 3 halves. The y term, 0 plus 6, is the same as 6 halves. Only one of these simplifies to a whole number. Is it the x value or the y value? I mean, finally, the correct answer is in the lead, guys. That's a good sign. So I'm going to share this tab instead. Right now, eight of you have it correct. Fourteen of you have it correct. C and D are, are very similar, but one has the two coordinates in the wrong order. Okay, there's still four people and you change their answer. If I come back to the tab where I'm working it out, um, say it was a multiple choice test, but maybe you had this as a possibility. Maybe you had one and five tenths comma three as a possible answer. You, you need to be able to take a fraction and convert it to a decimal when there are multiple choice tests because sometimes your answer is there, but it just looks a little bit different. Okay, so the correct answer for that one was D. Okay, question for you. Um, so you can go to your Pear Deck tab. It's a multiple choice question. All right, this one's taking off. You guys are on a roll. All correct answers so far. Okay, 360 degrees, that's how many degrees are in a complete rotation. How many degrees are in a circle? The question is not asking you about how many degrees are in a circle. It's for a triangle. So 16 of you have this correct. There are 180 degrees if you add up the three angle measures in a triangle. 180 degrees. That's really important that you know that because if you are given a picture of a triangle and you are given two of those angle measures, you can figure out the third angle measure by setting up an equation where you have it equal to 180 degrees on one side. Okay. So here's a picture, um, 
And you can look at this either in the Pear Deck tab or the Google Meet tab. But if you take a look at that picture, we have triangle DEF. And we are extending one side of the triangle out where angle F is. And it shows that the measure of that exterior angle is 150 degrees. You have an exterior angle theorem that tells you something very specific about this image. It tells you that if you add together the measures of D and the measures of E, what will it add up to? It's really interesting how Pear Deck does the responses for this. So I just want to show you this. It's kind of cool. It's actually creating a box plot of everyone's answers as you answer them. So you have your, your highest value, which is 150. You have your lowest value, which some people are saying negative numbers. Um, you have a median value, which is 150. Okay, but 150 is, is the most popular choice, and you can also tell because of the, how dark red the circle is, but 150 is correct. 150 degrees is what you get if you add E and D together, their measures together, it equals the measure of the exterior angle of the angle that is far away from the two that you're adding together. So that's important to know because you'll probably have some problems where you have to find a missing angle measure and know this. All right, classifying triangles. So this is review, but we are going to cover it because it is on your test, classifying triangles. And you guys, um, I didn't say you had to write anything down for this whole presentation, but I would probably go back and re-watch it over the weekend sometime and write down some notes so you can use those notes on the test. So we can classify triangles by side length. That's one way we can do that. There are three types of triangles that are classified just by their side length. And if you look at the three pictures um, in the green triangle, there's three little lines on each of the three sides, which means all three sides have the same length. That's what that little mark means. And then if you look at the yellow triangle, only two sides have that little mark, which those two sides are exactly the same length, but the third one may not be the same. That's an isosceles triangle. And then the third one, there are no little tick marks. Okay, that blue triangle, all three sides have different lengths. When that happens, we call it a scalene triangle. So equilateral triangle, all three sides are the same length. Isosceles triangle, at least two sides have the same length. And scalene, all three sides are different. Okay, so you're gonna draw me a picture. Go to your Pear Deck tab and please draw me a scalene triangle. That's a nice one. This is a scalene triangle that it looks like it also might be a right triangle. It's hard to tell. You can't assume that's a right triangle unless there's a little box there. This is scalene. Looks like all three sides are different lengths. That's scalene. That's a nice one. Yeah, that straight line drawing tool really helps uh, draw nice triangles shapes for the math drawings. I don't think that's a triangle. I'm not really sure who did that, but triangle? Mm. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, that's good. That's scaling. That's scaling. The one on the right looks a lot better. Yeah. Scaling. Okay. 
Good job. So just any triangle where the three sides are different lengths, that's scalene. There's another way to classify triangles. So um, we can do that by angle measure. So now we're looking at not their side lengths, but the measure of their angles. Now we know in all triangles, all three angles always add up to 180 degrees. But then if all three angles measure less than 90, we would say it's an acute triangle. Uh, if one angle measures exactly 90 degrees, and it's only possible for one angle to be 90 degrees. It is not possible to have more than that. Uh, that's a right triangle and it has that little box in it. If one angle measures more than 90 degrees, okay, then that is an obtuse triangle. And obtuse and acute triangles go with uh, the same thing, an acute angle, an obtuse angle, right? So these are three other ways we can classify triangles. And you can have combinations of, like if you look at that obtuse triangle, that is a scalene obtuse triangle, right? Um, the right triangle, it doesn't have any marks on it. None of these have any marks on it, but it, it could be an isosceles right triangle, you know, but it's hard to tell without... In math, you can't assume, right? So in here, if there was a little mark right here and a little mark right here, then that would be an isosceles right triangle. But I have one more thing for you to do. Okay, um, you're just gonna reflect on today's activities. So it's one last slide to do. You'll do this in Pear Deck. I will create a video of our presentation and I will post it to YouTube and link it to our week at a glance so that way you guys can watch this and go back over it and know what you need to study for your test next week your test is on Tuesday for our class okay so we'll have um, something asynchronous on Monday to do for review. And then on Tuesday, you'll be taking the test through Otis uh, in our synchronous time. Okay, before I let anyone take off today I do want to keep a couple of you behind because I just want to make sure I'm helping you guys if you have missing assignments that you know how to turn this stuff in so I'm gonna keep back the six people this is an old assignment Let's see are we all in line today I know there are <laughs> that's funny okay uh, let's see is Gabriel online Gabriel Roman Ford, Destiny Lugo, Alicia Valdez, Carly Volk. If you guys can stay on the meet, I want to show you something about a missing assignment that you have. Uh, if you want to stay on the Google Meet and just ask me a question about something, okay? You guys can do that. Uh, your next class is asynchronous, which means you don't have to be there right when it starts. So if you are confused about something that we talked about today, please stay on the line and ask a question. All right. Otherwise, you are you're good to go. You can hang up. You have a wonderful weekend.